Good evening, my name is Reverend Brian McLeod. Welcome to our Maudie Thursday service for April 14th, 2022 for Knox and Ephraim Scott Presbyterian Churches in K. Breton. Our call to worship. Holy One, we come in remembrance of you. Wash us, clean us, O Lord. We seek the cup of new covenant. The bread of forgiveness reminds us of your love. Let's join together in praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Let's bow for prayer, adoration, confession, and declaration of forgiveness. Let's pray. Holy and mysterious God, as we gather around this table and prepare to receive the story of the Last Supper, focus our attention and gather us into worship with ears that are prepared to hear, minds that are prepared to learn, hands that are prepared to receive, hearts prepared to love, even to the point of breaking, and draw us closer to Christ and receive in his loving kindness and service. Draw us closer to you. And to one another, named Jesus Christ. God of service and abundance on this night of holy meals, reminded that we ought to love and share with one another. We confess that you're always not your ways are not always our ways. We direct towards isolation and indifference. May we remember this night of communion and your ever new commandment of love. May our love and sharing be signs of hope and for this world. Amen. Here there's the words of assurance. God loves us so much that we receive new life in Christ. Remember this each time we eat the bread of life and drink from the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 8, 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of the month, each man should take the lamb for his family, one for each household, if any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with each person you will eat. The animals will choose must be year-old males without defect. You may take them from the sheep or goats, take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. And they are to take some of the blood and put it on sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That night they are to eat the lamb roast over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked in your belt, your hand sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, eat in haste is the Lord's Passover. On Sunday night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. I will bring judgment on all gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be assigned for your, on, your, on your houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This day you are to commemorate for generations to come. You shall celebrate as the festivals of the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Amen. The psalm tonight is Psalm 116, verses 12 to 18. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fill my vows to the people in the presence of all people. Precious in the sight of the Lord and the death of his faithful servants. True, I am your servant, Lord. I will serve you just as your mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. Amen. Our next reading is 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed to you. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave given thanks, he broke and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For wherever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Our final reading is Gospel of John, chapter 13, reading the first 17 verses. It's until Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just past hour of the festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were into the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returned to God. 
So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall not never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. But Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, Not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on the clothes and returned to the place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You called me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, I your Lord and teacher, wash your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The central focus of the Gospel of John is love. And the most famous text from the Gospel is John 3.16, proclaims God's love for the whole world, demonstrated through the sacrifice of his Son. The second half of the Gospel opens with John 13.1, declaring how Jesus loved his own who were in the world, even to then. The Messiah's saving mission is to love, and his final commandment to the disciples is to love one another. Jesus and the disciples are gathered for the pre-Passover meal, and Jesus is aware that his death is near. He uses the occasion as a teaching moment. I give you a new command that you love one another, just as I loved you. You also should want to love one another. In the Gospel of Luke, the lawyer quotes Hebrew law that loving the Lord and loving your neighbor are required to gain eternal life. In the Gospel of John, the expression of love command is based on the way of life Jesus had modeled. It seems odd to not to be focused on the Eucharist on Maudie Thursday. However, John's portrayal of the Last Supper has no mention of the meal or of Jesus sharing bread and wine. Instead, it focuses on a teaching moment through an act of service. During supper, Jesus takes off his outer robe and wraps a towel around his waist, an act of a servant. He then pours water in the basin and washes his disciples' feet and wipes them dry with a towel. Other disciples may have felt uneasy, but it was Peter who spoke up. You will never wash my feet. But Jesus assures Peter that he will not understand fully until later. But unless I wash you, you have no share with me. He then wants Jesus to wash his entire body. And when Jesus finishes washing his disciples' feet, the teaching moment begins. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And Jesus modeling how he wants his disciples and us to treat one another, especially as we are called into the relationship with God. We are not greater than others, but servants. Heaven loved his own. There's a love Jesus has for all people. And then there is a love for his own. It isn't so much that Jesus' love is different, but the dynamic of the love relationship is different. The love of Jesus for his own is greater because it has a response. And love answers to love. You see, Jesus owned the disciples. And what I meant by this is they were his own because he chose them. They were his own because he gave himself to them. They were his own because his father gave them to him. They were his own because he would soon purchase them. And they were his own because he conquered them. And they were his own because they yielded themselves to him. He loved them to the end. And Jesus loved his own. But he hadn't finished loving them. He would love them to the end. The idea behind the phrase, to the end, is the fullest extent. To the uttermost. The end means a love that will never end. And Jesus will never stop loving his own. It isn't a love that comes and goes, that is here today and gone tomorrow. To the end means a love that reaches to the fullest extent.
Mark was, le was an 11 year old orphan who lived with his aunt, a bitter middle aged woman, greatly annoyed with the burden of caring for her dead sister's son. She never failed to remind young Mark. If it hadn't been for her generosity, he would be a vagrant, homeless waif. Still, with all the scold and chillness at home, he was a sweet and gentle child. And Mark's school teacher had not noticed him particularly until he began staying after class each day. At the risk of arousing his aunt's anger, she later found out, found to help her straighten up the room. They did this quietly and comfortably, not speaking much, but enjoying the solitude of that hour of the day. When they did talk, Mark spoke mostly of his mother. That was quite small when she died. He remembered a kind, gentle, loving woman who always spent much time with him. As the holidays grew near, however, Mark failed to stay after school each day. His teacher looked forward to his coming. But when the days passed, he continued to scamper hurriedly from the room after class. She stopped him one afternoon and asked why he no longer helped her in the room. She told him how she had missed him, and his large gray eyes looked up eagerly as he replied, Did you really miss me? Mark's teacher explained how he had been her best helper. I was making you a surprise, he whispered confidently. I didn't stay after school anymore after that. Finally came the last school day before the holidays. Mark crept slowly into the room late that afternoon, his hands concealing something behind his back. I have a present for you. He said timidly when the teacher looked up. I hope you like it. He held out his hands. There lying in small palms was a tiny wooden box. It's beautiful, Mark. Is there something in it? I asked, opening the top to look inside. Oh, you can't see what's in it, he replied. And you can't touch it or taste it or feel it. But Mother always said it makes you feel good all the time. Warm on cold nights and safe when you're all alone. She gazed into the empty box. What is it, Mark? She asked gently. That'll make me feel so good. It's love, he whispered softly. And Mother always said it's the best when you give it away. And he turned and quietly left the room. See, Jesus received the greatest honor that could be bestowed on anyone. The very name of God and the worship that belongs to God alone. If we're living to serve the Lord in every part of our life, then we can be confident that our servanthood will be awarded by him. Even if it is ignored by our co-workers and superiors, when we embody the attitude of Christ, we know that God is pleased with our efforts. Moreover, we believe that God will one day reward us when we stand before his throne of grace. So he chose the servant attitude of Christ, probably because it's right, god honored thing to do, and probably because of the war that lay ahead of us. Thus, we're able to serve the people around us, even if our efforts are ignored or even scored. We serve others for the sake and pleasure of our Heavenly Master. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I'm going to read the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten as Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was then incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead. This kingdom shall know have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together were worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remissions of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And continue the prayer, the prayer ta God taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us daily our daily bread, 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God continue to walk with you on your journey. This concludes our Mahdi Holy Service for Thursday. God bless you all. Take care. Amen.